What's going on, y'all? This is Sam Thory. Welcome back to our series on building a modern web application for Raleigh AI Solutions, our company. Today, we're taking a pivotal step toward making our application reliable and maintainable. We're setting up a comprehensive testing infrastructure. Testing may not be the flashiest part of development, but it's absolutely essential to ensuring our code base remains robust, scalable, and bug-free as we add new features. In our last video, we worked on establishing our database foundation, where we implemented Drizzle ORM for type safe operations, set up PG vector for efficient embedding storage, created utility functions for common database operations, and set up HNSW indexes for vector similarity search. If you missed that, definitely check it out. You'll need it as a base for today's topic. In today's video, we're going to dive deep into building our testing infrastructure. We'll be covering everything from unit tests to integration tests and setting up our project to easily mock external services like Clerk and OpenAI. As a preview, we will be configuring vTest for TypeScript and React support, setting up an isolated test database, building mock utilities for external services, creating integration tests for core features, and implementing a debug logging system to simplify troubleshooting during testing. All right, let's get started. First, let's install our testing dependencies. We're going to use vTest for our testing framework, along with some popular libraries for testing React components. Let's go ahead and add those to our project. You may notice we're installing quite a few libraries. Here's a quick breakdown. VTest will be our main testing framework. It's similar to Jest and built for modern JavaScript, JavaScript projects. Testing library packages will help us test our React components in a way that mimics real user behavior. And finally, JSDOM will, help us, will let us simulate a browser environment for our tests. Next, we need to create a separate environment file for our test database. So we keep our development and test environments cleanly separated. This is really important for reliable and reproducible tests. So we're going to create a file cut called .env.test, which I've already created here. And we'll set these two values. So we have our database URL and our direct URL. And these are exactly the same for now. With that setup, our test can use an entirely separate database instance, which means we won't accidentally pollute our development or production data. Instead of live coding each of these files, let's thoroughly walk through the different parts of each file and I'll break down how everything works. We want to make sure everyone understands not just what the code is doing, but why we're doing it this way. First, we're going to start with our vtest configuration file. It's called vtest.config.ts, and this is at our root of our directory. This file defines how vTest will behave throughout our project. We configure it to work seamlessly with TypeScript and set up plugins to handle React components. The primary settings here are specifying the environment, which we set as JSDOM right here. And this allows us to do browser-like testing. We set up our module aliases right here, and we define where our test setup files are located right here. VTest is built to be flexible and integrates well with modern JavaScript projects. The configuration also includes coverage settings, making sure we get meaningful reports on what parts of our code are well tested. Next, we have our setup.ts file. This is in a new directory that we named tests, and it's in the root. This script runs before any of our test suites. It helps us set up important configurations such as global variables or mock services. This is crucial for ensuring that all tests start with the same base environment, making them more predictable and reproducible. In this file, we also initialize any configurations for our testing environment, such as setting up database connections or mocking certain third-party services to ensure isolation. You can see that I've heavily commented all of this code. It will be accessible in the comments. You'll have a, a link to this branch, but everything is highly, highly commented. So it's easy to understand. Now let's break down our database helper file. This file includes functions to handle database setup and teardown. Specifically, we're using PostgreSQL commands to create or drop the test database as needed. 
We also seed the database with sample data, which is really important for testing the different scenarios our, our application might encounter. We're using Drizzle ORM to manage database interactions in a type safe way, which ensures our SQL operations are checked by TypeScript, helping to prevent runtime errors. Drizzle also gives us the ability to use migrations, which keeps our schema consistent across environments. In the helper file, you'll see functions like reset database and seed database. These are keys to making sure our tests can run independently and reliably. So we just go through here, we can see all of these different functions that will run for us. And again, a lot of comments here to help you out as you're going along. Now moving on, we have our setup test env.ts file here. This file handles setting up any environment specific dependencies before running tests. This could include initializing a Redis client, setting feature flags, or connecting to our SuperBase backend. Ensuring our test environment closely matches production reduces the likelihood of unexpected issues when deploying to production. We also use this file to clean up after tests are finished. This includes dropping temporary databases, clearing out mocked services, and making sure that no side effects persist between tests. Next, let's walk through our mock implementations. And we have three here, Clerk, DB, and OpenAI. We have several mocks, including for Clerk, OpenAI, and our database layer. Mocks are essential for isolated testing. These are fake versions of the real services that return controlled, predictable results. For example, our OpenAI mock simulates different types of responses, different types of responses to test how our system handles both expected and unexpected output from the API. We, we create these mocks to ensure our tests are focused on our own code, not on the reliability or speed of external services. In our clerk.ts mock file, for instance, we can simulate different user states like logged in, logged out, or error scenarios, helping us thoroughly test our authentication flows. Next, we're going to move on to our fixtures file. And our, text fix, our test fixtures are reusable pieces of data that we, can, we use across multiple tests. For example, we have user profiles, document examples, and other objects that our code uses. By using fixtures, we can write clean, dry test cases without duplicating data set up in every test file. In our fixtures file, you'll see that we provide default data for our key entities. This helps keep our tests consistent and ensures we have a reliable baseline of data for each test suite. We can also extend these features, fixtures to create more complex scenarios as needed. Finally, let's dive into our integration tests. Our auth.ts file ensures that the authentication flow works end to end. We use a combination of mock requests and our da test database to simulate real user interactions. For, for instance, we simulate a user signing up, logging in, and handling errors, making sure our entire authentication flow is well tested. Documents.test.ts file tests our document handling logic. This includes CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. These tests interact with our mock database and make sure our application's key functionality works as expected. We use utility functions from our helper files to keep everything modular and maintainable. Each test case is designed to cover edge cases, ensuring our document service behaves correctly under various conditions. Finally, our content.ts test.ts file is focused on testing our content-related features such as content retrieval, storage, and updates. This is crucial for verifying that our content management logic integrates properly with the rest of our system. In this file, we perform operations like creating new content, validating its persistence in the database, and testing scenarios like content updates and deletions. We also use mock services for any external content-related API calls to ensure that our tests remain isolated and do not depend on the availability of third-party services. This test suite helps us validate that all content features are functioning as, in as intended, covering both common and edge case scenarios. And again, you can see that we've added quite a few comments here, so if anything is unclear, please do follow along with those comments or ask questions. Happy to help. 
All right, we're almost ready to run our tests, but first let's set up some convenient scripts in our package.json to ru make running tests a breeze. So in our scripts, we've added these four. We have test, which runs vtest, test UI, which runs vtest UI, test coverage, which runs vtest run coverage to check what we have covered, covered for testing, and test CI, vtest run. These scripts will allow us to easily run our tests, check coverage, or run everything in a CI CD environment. Finally, let's create our test database and, and enable the vector extensions so that we can run our tests successfully. I have already created these, but I'll go ahead and post these here so that you can see them. And so we have PSQL Postgres minus C create database where we're creating a database called test underscore DB. We're going to create the extension for vector, and then we're going to run our test. So if we go ahead and just, we're just going to run our test because we've already set up our database locally. And you'll see that we have five tests all have passed. We have three test files, the content, documents, and auth. And you can see that we have quite a few comments throughout here, very detailed, so that if we do run into any errors, we're going to be able to debug it pretty quickly, especially with the help of an AI app like Cursor or any of the other ones out there would help. So when writing tests, a good debug system can save a ton of time. I've set up a utility function to log errors and important information during tests. You can see we have this in our database.ts file here, this create logger. So this is just going to help us have very structured logs as we go. And we also have some different ones in these here, I believe. So this is going to help us quickly identify what went wrong when a test fails, especially when dealing with complex workflows, which we definitely have. Using consistent logging messages can make debugging much faster, especially when working with asynchronous code or when running tests in CI CD environments. We are working on a hub workflow, which will trigger when we push, try to commit to our, our main branch. This runs on, looks like, uh, push to main or develop. And um, it's not done yet, but eventually this is just going to be a hook that runs when we push up before we push to production, just to make sure that our tests are running uh, as expected in GitHub. So this is a YAML file where we're setting up Node.js and PMP, all of these things, but I still do have some errors on this that I'm working through before going any further. Go back down, we'll just put this guy up. That was quite a lot of ground to cover today, but we've set up a really solid testing infrastructure for our project. Let's do a quick recap of today's key takeaways. We set up VTest for type safe testing with TypeScript, configured an isolated test database to keep our test data separate, built a comprehensive mocking system for external services, created reusable test fixtures and integration tests, and added a debug logging system to help identify issues during testing. Testing doesn't just help us catch bugs, it gives us confidence to move quickly and make changes without fear of breaking things. So as we move forward and add more and more features to our app, we have this layer of security with our test suite that will uh, reduce the amount of time that we're going to spend breaking things. In the next video, we'll be moving on to building our reg engine. Finally, we've set up all of our different dependencies and our different layers, tools, TRPC, Drizzle, Supabase, VTest. All of these are ready to go and we can finally create our reg engine. What this is, is basically a retrieval augmented generation system that will enhance our ability to create relevant content dynamically. And that's it. So if you're enjoying the series, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next one.